Welcome to Morning Prayer on Wednesday the 4th of October. Um, it's good to have you with me, whether that's live on Wednesday morning um, here at nine o'clock or later on on Catch Up on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're joining me, you're very welcome. Uh, today we're celebrating the lesser festival of Francis of Assisi, uh, who even I've heard of, um, friar, deacon, founder of the Priors Minor. Uh, we'll be hearing words from Psalm 77 uh, as well as Mark chapter 14. Uh, as always, loads to be praying for, um, specifically in the diocese for the Anglican Church in Zambia and the Zambian Anglican Council, um, with whom we have a link in the diocese, and Archbishop Albert Charmer, following his translation from the Northern Diocese and installation as Bishop of Lusaka last month. So we'll be pleased to, uh, pleased to pray for Archbishop Albert, as, long as, uh, as well as all the many other things that we have uh, in our communities, in our lives, and in our churches um, at the moment. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all, to you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us. In your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives. Your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud to God and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire. My soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan. I ponder and my spirit faints. You will not let my eyelids close. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. Consider the days of old. I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night. My spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast us off forever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy clean gone forever? Has his promise come to an end forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he shut up his compassion in displeasure? And I said, my grief is this, that the right hand of the Most High has lost its strength. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your works and ponder all your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who worked wonders and declared your power among the peoples. With a mighty arm you redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God, the waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the ground. The earth trembled and shook. But your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters. But your footsteps were not known. You led your people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. We turn to the New Testament, Mark's Gospel, chapter 14. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, Olives. And Jesus said to them, that's the disciples, you will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. 
but after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come to the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping, taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. So we turn to our prayers of intercession as we pray for the day and the church and the world. Heavenly Father, we come before you conscious of the account here of Peter letting down Jesus, denying three times that he even knows him. Jesus' prediction that the disciples would be deserters. Lord, we know that sometimes we desert you. We go our own way instead of your way. Often by accident, sometimes without even knowing it, sometimes even deliberately. Lord, we thank you for the session we had of our Romans course last night, looking at Romans 3 on the subject of sin. We know that we have free will and sometimes we're tempted to go astray. But Lord, we thank you that you always forgive us when we repent and come back to you. So, Lord, we pray again that you would open our eyes and hearts to know those ways in which we stray and indeed to come back to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And, Lord, we pray today for the Diocese of Zambia, but especially Archbishop Albert, following his move to Lusaka. So Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be with him. And at the same time, we pray for our own bishops, Michael and Ruth. Ruth having not quite been translated, but uh, about to spend time with Coventry Diocese. So Lord, we do pray that you would equip and guide them with all that they need to lead us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're asked today to pray for aid agencies throughout the world, those who live in poverty and under oppression. So we do pray for Christians throughout the world who are persecuted for their faith, those who live in countries and neighbourhoods where 
It's dangerous to be a Christian. We ask for your protection upon the global church. And Lord, as we pray for those in poverty, so we give you grateful thanks for the generous food bank donations that have been made in both of our churches for this harvest time. Lord, we've been well overwhelmed by the generosity of so many people and that will no doubt be added to today at Staple Grove and on Monday at Norton with the school harvest services. So we do pray, Lord, that those gifts of love will reach out and offer not just practical support and sustenance to people who need it, but a sense of love and warmth and generosity too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those suffering from recent disasters within the world, continuing to hold before you those in uh, Libya and Morocco, following their respective tragedies, those who have suffered from accidents and acts of violence and terrorism, and Lord we pray for those agencies and organisations who will be supporting such people either on a national scale or quietly more privately. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. Lord we do pray for our schools Staple Grove and at Norton Fitzwarren. Lord, we thank you for the relationships we have with them between our churches and indeed the wider community. Thank you for the considerable work that's done to promote Christian values. Lord, we pray especially today for Staple Grove School as they prepare to come this afternoon to our church for their harvest celebration. So Lord, we pray that your spirit would be with us, that each one of us would have a sense of your presence. That we can all be inspired by your generosity to reach out in love and care for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who make a contribution to the ministry of our churches. So many people. For our church wardens, Andrew and Duncan and Felicity. Our treasurers, Jill and David. And Lord, we pray for Catherine, our curate. Thanking you for the considerable gifts that she brings to our uh, churches and indeed the wider church, praying that you would continue to work in her and through her. And we pray too for Esther as she continues to settle into her uh, training to be a lay reader. Lord, we pray that they would both have a growing uh, and deepening sense of your calling upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those individuals we know who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. Holding before you once again, Derek and Margaret, Gerald and Ivy and Barbara. Peter and Lynn and Martin, Alison. And Felicity. Lord, we know that you are 
a healing God. So we pray that they would be able to lean upon you. That your Holy Spirit will sustain them at this time. We pray for those who grieve. The friends and families of Bob Wolfenden, Phyllis Dart, and of Sue Durham. And we do pray for uh, Les as he settles into his new home. We trust and pray that the travel and transport will have gone well. And we do ask for your blessing and guidance upon Les and the family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you ever delight to reveal yourself to the childlike and the lowly of heart. Grant that following the example of the blessed Francis, we may count the wisdom of, his wor of this world as foolish, and know only Jesus Christ and him crucified, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us, preserve us from all evil, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hope you have a good day and look forward to catching up with you soon.